I have a policy of almost explicitly not turning down requests to speak to farmer groups. And in fact, uh, spoke to the New York Holstein Association a number of times, uh, a couple other groups, but it, it is my pleasure to, to meet with folks like you and, and talk to the people that are making decisions on the scene. Uh, I'll leave this up for a moment to let you, if you wish, copy down the phone number. The, the 301 number is my office number, the 443 number is my cell number, and I encourage you, if you have questions or concerns after the talk, call me. I, uh, I got a call out of the blue last week from a guy in Ohio, and I just I like talking to producers and understanding how they're viewing the world and what we can do to help, uh, help make your life a little easier. Um, in case you probably don't know it, I've got Parkinson's, so if I'm shaking, ignore it. Uh, I was hired as a mover and a shaker, and I do a lot less moving, a lot more shaking, but <laughs> it is what it is. So, it, uh, hopefully it'll dampen here in a minute, but, uh, but we'll get started and have a go at it. So, uh, just a little bit of an overview, a um, bit, of, bit of an introduction in genomics. I'm sure you've heard the term SNP or SNP. I'm going to give you a little bit of a definition of what that means, the whole idea of what a genome is the application that we're using this technology for, building better dairy cows. And then I try to spend a fair bit of time talking about where we're going in the future. And uh, just as an aside, Steve McPhail, if you'll raise your hand. Steve is from a uh, local area here, and Daniel Palm from GeneSeq was going to try to be here, but he uh, sent me a text, me text message a few minutes ago that there was too much snow and he was having too much fun playing with his kids. But, uh, but these guys represent the people that are on the ground doing genotyping, and, and GeneSeq's done a lot of it, and I think Steve and his group will kick into high gear as we talk about these assays that are coming online in the future. And I encourage you to talk to Steve after the, the discussion and, and interrogate him about what their vision is about how they can contribute to building better dairy cows and better, uh, better rice and all sorts of things that they're getting involved in. So one of the concepts that I think it's important that you understand it's probably not critical because in my mind this is sort of understanding the biological end of, of selection, but uh, I've been resoundingly quoted for a quote I made about 12 years ago that is, we don't need no stinking genes. I come from quantitative sort of traditional genetics background where I really don't care what we change in a cow to make her better as long as we make her better. But this is what's going on under the covers. We go from DNA to RNA to protein. Anything that we change at the DNA level is reflected somehow through protein. And so that's just the fundamental concept that all this is based on. But for the purposes of building, building better cows, we don't need to, I really don't think we need to worry a lot about that. But some of the issues like the, the conflict between increasing milk yield and decreasing fertility may be affected by things at this level. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is another uh, figure that I really like to talk about, especially to administrators. And that is what we've done with selection and your guys' levels of management in the dairy industry over the last 50 years. We've increased milk production by about a third while cutting the national herd in half. If that doesn't speak to greenhouse gas emission, I don't know what does. And so we actually had, about a week ago, a new undersecretary of agriculture through our shop, and this is one of the things that I always point out to her. And uh, she comes from Wisconsin and actually was fairly familiar with the, this concept and it's really supportive of the research that we're doing in USDA. So this is what our traditional selection process involved. And I'll just cut to the figure at the bottom. It's basically an idea that using sort of a black box, black box phenomenon, we combine data, performance data, milk yield, protein yield, confirmation data, with the pedigree information, run it through a fairly sophisticated computing set of gobbledygook for what you guys need to know, and spit out the other end, predicted transmitting abilities, predicted net merit, predicted genetic values, whatever sort. And so what we're doing is trying to tweak that black box by introducing genomics into it, and that may allow us to reduce the amount of pedigree data and performance data that we need in order to do this. Let me pause for just a second here and, and say, first of all, that I know I slip into jargon really easily, and there's the term phenotype there. So if I, if I use words that are foreign to you guys, just stop me. Raise your hand, throw a book at me, do something. But wow. just let me know if I'm using terms that, aren't, that you're not comfortable with. 
And if you have any questions as we go through here, stop me as well, because if you don't understand what, okay. you can assume that if you don't understand what, what I'm talking about, that at least half the rest of the group doesn't understand. <coughs> so if I'm getting into territory that you're uncomfortable with, just stop me, please. So one of the, the limitations that we've had using <coughs> traditional pro progeny test programs is it's a fairly slow process. By the time we get daughters on the ground for a young bull, he's at least five years old, because we've got to have a pregnancy, first of all, he's got to be old enough to, to produce semen. He's got to distribute the semen through guys like CMEX and, and uh, select the representative table here. They have to get the cows pregnant, the cows have to calve, the calves have to grow up old enough to have first lactation, and then at least a partial lactation and, uh, before we have any, any performance data on those young bulls' daughters so that we can predict genetic values. 